Doki Doki Literature Club has gotten a lot of attention since it came out near the end of last year. And if you would like to play it without spoilers, then I'd suggest skipping this video. Anyway, Doki Doki has received nearly universal praise for its unique way of subverting the gamer's expectations, along with its focus on mental health issues. But lately, sadly, the game has received some negative attention after a young man from England took his life and the game was in part blamed for his suicide. Now, I don't want to make light of his struggles or what his family is going through or what many people throughout the world are going through related to mental health. But with the way the news media has handled it, I feel that there is something that I need to say about it. Now, I am a big fan of Doki Doki. I did a live stream of it on my channel a month or two ago, and I had a lot of fun with it, and, well, if you want to see my reactions as they happen, go check out that live stream. But yes, there is a lot to this game that makes it worthwhile, and this is what I feel a lot of the news stories are missing, though we'll get more to that later. As far as I can tell, the news site that broke the news was the Manchester Evening News, which tells the story of how Doki Doki dragged the young man in before he committed suicide. The article describes the game as being full of violence and suicide and self-harm, and yeah, the game has all these. But my issue with the article and the many who are reporting on this original source is how they don't try to understand what the game is about, merely parodying a little bit of information about it. There have been some people who have compared it to how violent video games are blamed for people with violent actions, even though that is not the case. But the violent video games and the blame Doki Doki is getting are kind of alike in that they are both being scapegoated for something else by people who don't understand video games. The article from the Manchester Evening News also talks about how the game would send messages to Ben's cell phone telling him to do things, which will seem odd if you have played the game or know much about it because the game doesn't do that. The article and those like it are sending a warning to parents to look out for this game and others like it because they appear cute and innocent while in fact being something much darker, which again is a case of them not understanding the context. Because yes, these articles do have a point. There can be a danger in games like Doki Doki, but there is a much larger topic that they need to address here. And that is that parents should keep an eye on what kids do online. The articles report that there are not hard age checks for kids to be able to play this game. But really, anyone get with a computer can say they are 13 or whatever age and can just check the box on the disclaimer. And anything online, you can probably get to even if you aren't 18 or whatever age they require. It just might require a little bit of work to do so. So yes, it is on the parents to keep an eye on what their kids are doing. So during the news story on the BBC about this topic, there was a lot of discussion about if the age suggestion for Doki Doki being 13 was too low, which as I look into it, yeah, I think it is. But I feel that this discussion misses out on the point that these age limits are more suggestion because different people can handle different things. And there isn't a set age when you can say everyone is good for Doki Doki. There are teenagers, kids, who I'm sure would be completely fine with Doki Doki. But there are also adults, which because of the nature of the disturbing content, they shouldn't play. It's up to the player, or in case of minors, their parents, to figure out what this line is. I and siblings have played M-rated games before we were 16. And really, there wasn't any harm from that. But in some kids' case, there might be. There's also the point brought up by the BBC that this is a game that appeals to children because of the art style, and because of the cute characters, people would just click through, not pay any heed to the age warnings or the disturbing content disclaimer. And well... In some cases, this might be true. This is a case, again, where they are misunderstanding the context of this game. The art style here is not to appeal to children, but instead anime fans who are of a variety of ages. I do have to give some credit to the BBC because they brought on some sort of expert who clarified this point, but still. There's also the disclaimer in the psychological horror tag on the website, which tells the potential gamer something more if they are the target audience and that this is going to be a seemingly cute but far darker show which there is a lot of audience for in the anime community. Think Madoka or last year's critically acclaimed Made in Abyss or the entire dark magical girl genre which I love. Look forward to a future video about that one by the way. So no, Doki Doki is not looking cute and innocent to bring in kids. It's to bring in anime fans like me or a bit dark and twisted in the mind. And this is something that the news media should have picked up on, which brings me to one of the bigger points I want to make with this video, 
And that is the problem of fake news. Yes, I know I'm going to sound like the president here, but stick with me. I know when I look at an article about Doki Doki, if it is a correct one or just one with a lot of fake information in it. And if you are someone who's played Doki Doki or know a reasonable amount about it, you would be able to come to the same conclusions as me. But if you're a parent and you don't understand everything that goes on in the internet or what's popular or video games, you would probably be worried, especially if your kid spends a lot of time online and you don't have a good idea of what they're doing online. And therefore, you would be inclined to believe this fake news. I know there are a lot of topics I'm not an expert on that I don't know as well as Doki Doki. So when there are media reports on these, how am I supposed to know which articles are actually truthful and which ones have no idea what they're talking about, like business or finance or health or politics? All this information is presented from these news sites, and while I want to believe them, I have seen in more than a few occasions that they have absolutely no idea what they're talking about, and this cuts across both sides of the political spectrum. And that's not even counting the misinformation on Facebook. Like, if you see a picture on Facebook trying to give you information, assume it is a 100% lie, and you'll probably be right. Though that's not what I'm here to talk about. Though if you want me to talk about it, that might be kind of fun, especially with those couple people who seem to just share all kinds of stuff like that. But yeah, anyway, the point that I'm trying to make is that it is so easy to blame others, the things and people we don't understand for a bad situation, whether it's another political party or race or a religion or a type of technology we don't get. The media's job should be to help us understand the world, especially the parts of it that we don't know. And yes, there are some sites and newspapers and stuff that try to do that, but it feels like a lot of them, that's not their intention. One of the sites that I did like when I was researching this was Mirror, which did have a somewhat clickbaity title telling people this is what parents need to know about Doki Doki. And it actually did do that. It gave you a summary of the game, the disturbing content, and also gave parents some tools to help better monitor the games that their children are playing. But it took this a step further and talked about the good that Doki Doki can have on those who play it and pointed out some other games kind of like it that might be of interest. Like Oxenfree, which looks really cool and I kind of want to do a live stream of it. Look out for that. Especially since it's on Steam for $5, so yeah, I need to go buy that as soon as this video is done. Hopefully it's still on sale then. Anyway, while not for everyone for a variety of reasons, Doki Doki really is a worthwhile game to play. The fact that it's a video game allows it to have a different kind of impact that most mediums can't. When you're watching an anime or reading a book, you see what the main characters are doing. You may feel some of their struggle, but when you're playing a video game, you are the one struggling to accomplish whatever goal that is, and that lets these games have so much greater impact. And that's what makes Doki Doki feel so real. Most of the news about it lately has been pointing out the dangers, how it can drag people in. And yes, there might be some truth to that, but there is another side to it. The power that Doki Doki has for good that I feel I need to bring up as a sort of response. I truly believe Doki Doki can have a positive effect on the lives of those who play it, through its portrayal of those with mental illness. Mental health is something that really is just brushed under the rug a lot of times. It's stigmatized preventing people from getting the help that they need. And it's one of those things that, unless you're told otherwise, you just assume that no one deals with these issues. Though, that's not the case. And Doki Doki forces a player to see the flaw in this assumption, specifically with the character of Sayori and it is haunting how well that is done. Sayori is the happy fun character, your childhood friend, the one you are drawn to from the start, or at least that's how I was. But then as we got further along through the game, we saw that this is a facade, that it was a mask she put on to fool the world and herself about how depressed she really was. One of the most shocking things about this is how she's known the main character for years but he never knew what she was dealing with. He thought that her quirks were just that, fun little weirdnesses about her. And this is what hit me most about the game, because I know and really care deeply about those who are just like Sayori. Sayori is a character that many can relate to, either with how they are or they know people who are like her. Those who fight with depression, hiding it from those around him, only sometimes letting the cracks in the mask show who they really are. And they have friends who want to help them, who want to say these encouraging words, but they have no idea what to say. Through this game, I feel like I kind of better understand those around me and those I care about, at least in a small way. But I feel like it was able to shed a little bit of light on their struggle. And for those who are struggling with depression, it can shine a light for them to help them to see 
that there are those who understand them and that they aren't alone. That there is someone out there who can relate.